Mr. Beat presents Presidential, presidential Elections in American, American History. History. The 32nd presidential election in American history took place on November 5th, 1912. Oh yeah, this was the election that was completely and utterly messed up. It was weird, man. Really weird. How weird? Well, look at that electoral map for crying out loud. What the heck is that? But I'm ahead of myself. Let's go back a bit. The Taft presidency was supposed to be Theodore Roosevelt 2.0, but right off the bat, it just wasn't that way. Taft was like his own person. He fired cabinet members that Roosevelt had approved of or appointed. While Taft continued to fight trust, he placed less of a commitment to conservation, labor unions, and restrictions on the employment of women and children. Soon there was a clear split in the Republican Party between the more conservative-leaning Republicans led by Taft and the progressive Republicans led by Teddy Roosevelt. After traveling around the world with his family for more than a year, Roosevelt came home to one of the biggest receptions ever given in New York City. Initially neutral about giving his opinion about how his friend was doing as president, that changed when eventually a bunch of progressive Republicans had convinced Roosevelt to run against Taft in 1912. The Republicans Republicans expanded their primaries to include even more delegates from across the country to the national convention to choose their nominee. Going into the convention, Roosevelt actually had more delegates than Taft did. Taft's people, however, controlled the convention and essentially shut out many of the Roosevelt delegates. This, of course, made Roosevelt very angry, and he and his supporters stormed out of the convention. Not since the election of 1872 had there been such a major divide within the Republican Party. In fact, in fact, Roosevelt and his supporters completely abandoned the Republicans, two weeks later meeting up to create their own political party called the Progressive Party. These progressives nominated Roosevelt for president, well, duh, and Hiram Johnson, the governor of California, as his running mate. At the convention, Roosevelt passionately promoted what he called a new nationalism. Their platform sought a minimum wage for women, an eight-hour workday, a child labor law, a social security system, a national health service, and the direct election of U.S. senators, among other things. Afterward, Roosevelt told reporters he felt as strong as a bull moose. After that, the Progressive Party became popularly known as the Bull Moose Party. Despite the excitement of the Bull Moose Party, the Republicans pressed on with Taft as their candidate and James Sherman again as his running mate. Believe it or not, Sherman was the first incumbent vice president to be nominated for re-election since John Calhoun way back in 1828. Meanwhile, the Democratic Party, who hadn't done so well in presidential elections since, I don't know, before the Civil War, saw this major split of the Republican Party as a golden opportunity. They had a bit of drama as well at their own convention. Originally, it looked like Champ Clark, the Speaker of the House from Missouri, was going to be the guy, but he failed to get the two-thirds majority needed to secure the nomination. In second place was Woodrow Wilson, the governor of New Jersey. Wilson didn't really think he had a chance, but then William Jennings Bryan decided to endorse him, and Bryan still had a lot of fans, so he had a lot of of influence. On the 46th ballot, that's right, I said 46th, Wilson was nominated with Thomas Marshall, the governor of Indiana, as his running mate. So that's it? Oh, heck no. In 1912, Eugene Debs ran for president a fourth time, trying to keep together a socialist party that was also splintering. Debs was by this time a recognizable name across the nation, and his running mate was Emil Seidel, the former mayor of Milwaukee, the first ever socialist mayor of an American city, as a matter of fact. The Prohibition Party responded to Eugene Eugene running again by having their Eugene run again. Eugene Chafin gave it a second try with Aaron Watkins again as his running mate. The campaigns were dominated by the rivalry between Taft and Roosevelt, former friends who now seem like bitter enemies. With those two fighting, the election looked to be a lock for Wilson, which was lucky for the Democrats because Wilson wasn't the most charismatic person. Teddy Roosevelt was, but critics said he was running more for his ego 
and for spoiling the election for the Republicans than for actually reforming the country. Roosevelt campaigned like crazy, traveling around 10,000 miles and visiting 34 states. While he was in Milwaukee, an unemployed saloon keeper named John Schrank shot him right before he was about to give a speech. As it turns out, the bullet did not penetrate his chest. Reportedly, both his steel eyeglass case and his 50-page folded copy of the speech in his pocket maybe saved his life. Anyway, rather than, I don't know, go to the hospital, Roosevelt decided to give the speech anyway. He began his speech saying, quote, Friends, I shall ask you to be as quiet as possible. I don't know whether you fully understand that I have just been shot. Unquote. He went on to finish that 90-minute speech like a bull moose indeed. This election marked the first time New Mexico and Arizona participated in a presidential election as they both became states earlier that year. As Election Day drew near, things were not looking so good for Taft. To make matters worse, less than a week before the election, Vice President Sherman died. Sherman is the last vice president to have died while in office. And here are the results. Woodrow Wilson won, becoming the 28th president in American history. Even though he had less votes than William Jennings Bryan ever had, he still easily won. He received 435 electoral votes and 41.8% of the popular vote. Coming in second was Teddy Roosevelt, who received 88 electoral votes and 27.4% of the popular vote. This was the last presidential election in which a candidate who was not a Republican or Democrat came in second second place in either the Electoral College or popular vote. In third place, William Howard Taft, with just eight electoral votes and 23.2% of the popular vote. With so many former Republicans joining the Progressive Party, this resulted in the Republicans suffering their worst presidential defeat in history. Taft suffered the worst ever defeat of any president trying to get reelected. Interestingly, both Taft and Roosevelt lost their home states. In fourth place, Eugene Debs got 6% of the popular vote. In fifth, Eugene Chafin got 1.4% of the popular vote. Thomas Marshall became the 28th vice president in American history. Wilson would become the only Democrat president between 1896 and 1932, and only the second of two Democrats elected president between 1860 and 1932. Obviously, the Republican split had benefited him greatly, as he won several states that historically had voted for the Republican candidate. This election marked the only time since 1860 in which four different candidates each got more than 5% of the popular vote. Also, it was the only election in which a third party candidate did better than one of the major parties. Again, now look at this map. What the heck? I'll see you for the next election, buddy.